And secondly, the other critical factor is the the chronic weakness of the Black King. It's not going to... I say chronic because even if Black had three moves in a row, it would be very difficult to improve his king position. On the other hand, Carpo's king is absolutely safe and remains so for the entire game. So in conclusion, we can say that White has a very pleasant position, very good position. Whether or not it's winning, I, I, I can't say. But I'd say it's a, a nice advantage. Bishop c5. Bishop takes c5, queen takes c5, and now rook d7. Stepping up the pressure. f5. Rook a d1, and this is an important move because it threatens rook d8 check. And forces black to make a decision, is he going to play c6 or knight c6? Timmy went for knight c6. Probably hoping to be able to develop that knight sooner or later to e5. Because it's the bishop in f3 which is white's most powerful piece at the moment. Knight a4. Queen b5. Rook c1. You can see in this game that Karpov plays very purposefully, never really giving Timon a chance to coordinate his pieces. Now the problem for Timon is now after knight e5, Kuchne plays Karpov plays rook d takes c7. If knight takes f3, g takes f3. This is big big problems for Timon. It's quite beautiful because after queen takes a4, rook c8 check. And if king takes b7, rook on 1 to c7 is mate. This is Karpov's tactical justification. On the other hand, after rook d takes c7, knight f3, g f3, queen takes a5 instead, then knight c5 comes with a knight either coming to a6 or to d7 with a winning position for white. So rook c1, excellent move, piling on the pressure. Timon had to take on a4. Rook takes c6. Queen takes a5. Rook takes e6. King a7. And now Karpov played the very natural g3. I was waiting for that move because one of Black's only last chance is the weakness in Karpov's first rank back row checkmate in other words g3 kills that funnily enough g3 though was Karpov's first slight mistake and it gives Korchnoi a little bit of hope in fact the correct move was h4 with the same idea the point being that after g3 Timon sees his opportunity with g5 an excellent move now there's still some sort of back row problems for example black has the idea of g4 the bishop retreats to g2 there's queen a1 check and if you have to go to f1 then suddenly you, your, your bishop is pinned in an uncomfortable way also the other advantage of h4 over g3 w would be that um, that pawn on g7 would become a target even if black plays g6 his pawns are still much weaker than, than they are in the game now Karpov comes up with a nice little tactic rook takes h7 very nice the point if rook takes h7 rook e8 and white will queen so rook b8 was necessary h3 now Timon continues with the correct strategy of uh, trying to open up lines against the white king. So he plays g4, hg4, fg4. Now you don't really want to take on g4 and allow that pawn on b7 to drop off. So bishop g2, queen a1 check, king h2, queen takes b2. And here you'll appreciate that Karpov has, Karpov's king is slightly weakened. 
For example, if that rook on h7 moves, Timon has rook h8 and it's mate. So at this stage, Karpov would be um, slightly regretting playing g3. It's going to be more complicated to win this. He plays rook h to h6, queen a2. Karpov just plays simple chess, rook ef6, just holding the f pawn for the moment. C5, Rook F4. Now Timon finally missed his chance. He could have played C4. White will then be able to win that C pawn. Sooner or later, round up all the pawns. For example, Bishop F1. But in, in that, and then uh, after rook takes b7, for example, bishop takes c4, white will win the pawn on a6, g4, and of course that c pawn, but at least that pawn on b7 would be able to be captured. Then there'll be a complicated position where white will have a rook, bishop, and two pawns against the queen. Of course, both sides also having rooks. Difficult to win because there'll be the constant problem of a potential perpetual check against the white king. So that would have been far from over. In fact, Karpov himself does not say whether he, it's a clear win or not. Well, on the other hand, after queen d2, which was the move played, now bishop f1, rook takes b7, rook takes a6 check, king b8, rook f8 check, King c7, bishop g2, we have a slightly different situation. Materially, black's doing better th than in the last variation, but unfortunately, he's now coming under a mating attack. First threat in this position would be rook c6 check, king d7, rook f7 check, and picking up a free rook. So Timon played queen d7. Karpov plays rook h8, stopping queen h7. C4, there's not much else to do. Bishop E4. And now, unfortunately for Timon, the threat of rook H7 is basically decisive. He's either going to lose his queen for a rook, or he's going to lose a rook on B7 completely. If you if he moves his queen, rook H7 check, and uh, Karpov, of course, picks up the rook on B7 for free. So, unfortunately, Timon had to resign at this point. Now summing up, first of all, Karpov played brilliantly because it seems like his only real inaccuracy was on um, g3, on move 27. Timon also played very well. He had a chance in the end game to keep it alive on move 35, but he missed it. But I think the overall point of the game was that the, the queen sacrifice put black under tremendous pressure and gave white a close to winning advantage. So it was really Karpov's ability to assess the queen sacrifice in advance with the clock ticking and see that it would give him a, a huge a huge positional advantage even though there wasn't a direct win. But then of course Karpov followed up with several very accurate moves in a row uh, which eventually enabled him to get a clean end game with two rooks and a bishop against a rook and a queen. And that was exactly what Karpov wanted, because with that pawn supported, that B, pawn on b7 supported by the bishop, it's always going to be difficult, if not impossible, for Kar Timon to hold the end game. So, a great game by Karpov. Um, that queen sacrifice actually does occur more often than you'd think, especially in the Scandinavian. That opening occurs after e4, d5. So, keep it in mind, and maybe you'll get a chance to play it yourself. All the best and thanks very much. This is John Paul Wallace for ChessLecture.com.